Shout hallelujah. Somebody that is here for a strange encounter tonight, convince God that you are here already by shouting the loudest hallelujah. This is a strange night. It's a mystery night. Every kind of evil around your destiny must be swallowed up tonight in the name of Jesus. Every form of affliction that you may have come here with tonight, as the Lord liveth, they are dropping down here in the name of Jesus. Every pain, every issue of sorrow around your destiny that have persisted all these years tonight is marking the end in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, he says, Come unto me, he that labor and are of heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Everything that is bringing on rest to your destiny, today it shall be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. I like you to lift up your voice in prayer. Lord, every issue of unrest in my destiny today marks the end by this feet washing. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Every issue of unrest around my destiny tonight it shall be swallowed up. It shall be swallowed up. It shall be swallowed up. Lift up your voice and pray unto the Lord. Pray in faith. Pray in faith. Pray in faith. Every issue of reproach. Every issue that I brought on rest to my destiny. Today. Today. It shall be laid to rest. Today it shall be laid to rest. Express your expectation to God. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. As you have spoken in the ears of God tonight, so shall he do for you in the name of Jesus. If you are expecting your miracle, shout the loudest, Amen. Shout the loudest, Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please, you may be seated. Help me welcome your neighbor and tell him, welcome to this strange encounter night. Tell your neighbor, you are not living here the same. You are living here with your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Once again, I'd like to appreciate this privilege tonight given to me by God and by God's servant, our Father, to bring the word of God unto us. And I do believe that the Holy Spirit we expand these words in our hearts and we grant us our heart desire tonight in the name of Jesus. Our prophetic team for the month is God still works wonders through praise. God still works wonders through praise. And tonight is a special pre shilo feet washing service. And I know that God has prepared your miracle tonight. That's why you are here. Very briefly, we'll be sharing God's word on the topic unveiling the mystery of feet washing. 
unveiling the mystery of feet washing. Our text is John chapter 13. Please open with me your Bibles to John chapter 13. We are reading from verses 3 to 12. John chapter 13, verses 3 to 12. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rised up from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and gathered himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was guided. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered him and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Hallelujah. And Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needed not save to wash his feet, but is clean every week. And ye are clean, but not all. Jesus said unto him, For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. Verse 12. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garment, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. Praise the name of the Lord. Unveiling the mystery of feet washing. What is a mystery? A mystery is a divine secret embedded in scriptures. A mystery is a divine secret that is embedded in scripture, that is buried, that is hidden. It's a hidden secret. A divine secret that is buried inside scriptures that needs to be unraveled in order to enjoy the blessing. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul speaking to the Ephesian church, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you all, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Hallelujah. By revelation, he made unto me, he made known unto me the mystery mystery they are hidden secrets that are revealed to apostles they have been revealed to apostles and it has likewise been made known unto us so that we can enjoy the blessings that is carried a mystery therefore is a divine secret that is embedded in scriptures God's ways are not like our own ways Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8 his thoughts, they are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. There are certain divine secrets that God has put in scriptures that are for our benefit, our blessings. And he has revealed that to apostles. This is one of such mysteries that has been revealed to the apostle over this commission. So that we can be partakers of the blessing that it contains. A mystery may not make sense to the natural mind. But only fools doubt proofs. 
we have had diverse testimonies coming from this mystery of feet washing. Even though they look so simple to the natural mind. Even though they don't make sense to the natural mind. But we have had the testimonies. Some of the testimonies that was read tonight. Products of this mystery. And only fools doubt proofs. It takes the ridiculous in order to experience the miraculous. Until you can believe the ridiculous, you cannot experience the miraculous. How can you explain that miracle in John chapter 2? In Cana of Galilee. At that wedding in Cana of Galilee, they needed wine and Jesus said, fill the pots with water. Fill the pot with water. It looks so ridiculous. It is wine that we need. Why are you telling us to fill it with water? We don't need water. We have enough water. It is wine we need. But Jesus said, fill it with water. And they filled it. And Jesus said, okay, draw it. They were watching him. But thank God, the mother of Jesus had told them earlier on, don't try to reason with your head. Whatever he tells you to do, do. You may not understand it. It may look senseless. But just obey, believe, and do. And they did. As they drew, it became wine. Hallelujah. Until you can believe the ridiculous, you cannot experience the miraculous. Until you believe the ridiculous, you cannot experience the miraculous. You know the story of Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5. He was leprous. And the prophet said unto him, Go and wash yourself in Jordan. Go and wash yourself. And Naaman was getting angry. How can he say I should go and wash? I told him my problem. I expected him to pray for me. I expected him to pay a special prayer. How can he tell me to go and wash in that pool? When I have a swimming pool in my house. But thank God for that little maid. He said, Master, you may not understand. But if that is the instruction he has given you, go. That is where your healing is. Until you can believe the ridiculous you cannot experience the miraculous. Hallelujah. Mysteries. Most of the times they are wrapped in biblical simplicity. They look so simple. So simple to believe. Somebody has come with a sickness tonight in your body. And they have told you that as you wash your feet, you are receiving your healing. Just like that testimony that was read. That woman was carrying three years pregnancy. Could not deliver. She has been to everywhere. And that faithful day she was invited to a feet washing service. And they told her, as your feet are washed, you are receiving instant touch, instant intervention. She said, I have this baby in my stomach. And you are telling me to wash my feet. What is the connection between my feet and my stomach? If there is anything to wash, it will be my stomach. Praise the name of the Lord. They look so simple. But that's where the power of God is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. The Bible says, But to the natural man, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. They look foolish to the natural man. Foolish. They look so simple. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. He says, through the simplicity, you can be carried away. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Satan can want to corrupt your mind. Can want to sow a seed of unbelief and doubt. Why? Because it looks so simple. You are looking for a business breakthrough and here you are. They say, as you wash your feet, 
you are stepping into that breakthrough. You want to begin to think, what's the connection between my feet, washing my feet and my business? It looks so simple. And because it is simple, Satan tries to corrupt people's minds so that they miss their blessings. But tonight you won't miss your miracle. I say you won't miss your miracles. In the name of Jesus. Apostles and prophets are custodians of the mystery of the kingdom of God. They are custodians of the mystery. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. He said, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. These mysteries are given to apostles. The revelations are given to them. So that the body of Christ at large can be partakers. Hallelujah. It takes mysterious weapons to handle the mysterious and complicated challenges of life. Mysterious weapons to handle the complicated challenges of life. The fight against your destiny, they look complicated. You need a mysterious weapon. Certain things are happening in your life that have defy human explanation. Very intelligent, but you can't have a breakthrough. You are very diligent, but yet nothing is working for you. The challenges of life are complicated. They look mysterious. You need a mysterious weapon. And that's why God has given us this weapon of feet washing that will swallow every mysterious challenge of our life. Tonight, as your feet are washed, every challenge of your life that have defied human solution, it shall be turned to a testimony in the name of Jesus. What is feet washing? What is feet washing? It is a spiritual medium through which we take delivery of our hanging inheritance in Christ. It is a spiritual weapon through which we take delivery of our hanging inheritance in Christ. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine power had given unto us all things, all things, all things, all things. Can I hear you say all things? He has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness, but we can't assess it except through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He takes the knowledge, the proper knowledge of the mysteries of God to be able to tap into the blessing. So that your life can be meaningful. He has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. It's there, but we cannot assess it until we understand the mystery of his world. Feet washing is therefore one of those assets. It's a spiritual medium through which we take delivery of all things. The all things that pertains to life and godliness that has already been packaged onto, for us. It's a spiritual medium to take all our inheritances in Christ. In the natural, you receive things with your hands. But in the spiritual, you receive things with your leg. And that's why he told Joshua, wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread, you are possessing it. So in the natural, you receive things with your hands. But in the spiritual, you receive with your leg. Today, as your feet are washed, whatever it is that you desire, that is not yet, uh, is not yet delivered unto you, shall be delivered unto you in the name of Jesus. You have a part in Christ. You take it through feet washing. There is something in your life that is still not there, that is in Christ. There is a part of your inheritance in Christ that is still missing in your life. That's why you are struggling in that area. Everything 
that pertains to life and godliness. Jesus has already purchased it for us with his blood. He has already received it for us. He doesn't need it. We need it. He has collected it for us. All those parts of our inheritance, they are in him. But we assess it through feet washing. We take that part through feet washing. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12, it, both, it clearly lists to us our inheritances in Christ. Revelation 5 and verse 12, saying with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing see how we see the rich inheritances that we have in christ how can jesus have only received for us wisdom and yet we are still walking in folly and foolishness he has received for us strength why are we still living in weakness that's not your portion he has received for us glory. Why are we still experiencing shame in one area or the other in life? That's not your portion. That's not your portion. He has received for us blessings. Why are we living as if we are under causes? Everything around our life blocked. That's not our portion. But today, as your feet are washed, you are assessing these inheritances in the name of Jesus. In John chapter 13, where we have read earlier on, we saw how Jesus enacted the mystery of feet washing. After supper, he guarded himself and began to wash the feet of his disciples. He said unto them, The Father has given all things into my hands. Verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need blessing. He doesn't need honor. He doesn't need strength. He's going back to his Father. He had collected those things for us. He can't take it back. He needed to transfer it to you and me because that was why he collected it. The father has given all things into his hand. He was in charge. He was in dominion. He had power over all things. He couldn't take it back to heaven. And so it was a time for him to transfer it to you and me. He called his disciples. And he began to wash their feet. He wanted to transfer those things to them. He wanted them to begin to operate in the realm of dominion that he was operating in. Hallelujah. Peter said, you will not wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you don't have a part in me. It is as serious as that. So feet washing is not a church doctrine. It's a spiritual medium for the transference of all those virtues that we have just enumerated in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. Peter said, you won't wash me. Jesus, if I don't wash you, you have been with me all this while. No problem. Attendance does not mean transference. You have been with me all this while. You are available. But if I don't wash your feet, you have lost everything. Hallelujah. If I don't wash your feet, you don't have a part in me. He said, not only my feet, everything. Praise the name of the Lord. Wash everything. I need these things. So feet washing is a medium of transference. It's a mystery of transference of virtue. Virtue, virtue, virtue. So tonight, as your feet will be washed, I'd like you to understand that if you have been experiencing shame in any area of your life, if, as your feet touches that water, that shame is swallowed up. 
that amen is too weak for a miracle. As your feet are washed tonight, everywhere your blessings are hanging, they will be automatically delivered unto you. As your feet are washed tonight, maybe you came here weak. You, you just pull yourself to come. You came here with one burden. You came here with one pain. Either in your back, either on your head. You, something was disturbing your internal system. You came here with one ailment or the other. As your feet are washed, that sickness is dropping in the name of Jesus. That affliction is dropping in the name of Jesus. It's a trans medium of transference. It's a medium of transference. It's a medium of transference. Maybe you feel confused concerning a matter. You are about to take a step, but you are confused. And you have been in that situation. You don't know what step to take. You only need the wisdom of God. As your feet are washed tonight, you are receiving supernatural wisdom. You are receiving supernatural wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Poverty is not your portion. Jesus became poor so that you and I may enjoy riches. Somebody is about to break forth in strange financial breakthrough here. I, I don't know where that person is seated tonight. I say you are, somebody is about to break forth financially. Somebody is about to break forth financially. Somebody is about to break forth financially. As your feet are washed tonight, you are receiving a financial breakthrough. The kind of finances that you have never handled in your life, after this feet washing, you will handle it in the name of Jesus. The kind of contract you have never signed in your life. After this feet washing, you will be signing it in the name of Jesus. Feet washing is a spiritual medium for transference. Hallelujah. What are the blessedness of feet washing? What are the blessedness? What are the blessings that feet washing carries? Number one. There is cleansing power in feet washing. There is cleansing power in feet washing. Second Kings chapter 5 verses 10 to 14. You know the account of Naaman as he went to that river. Second Kings chapter 5 verses 10 to 14. As he went to wash in Jordan seven times, his leprosy was cleansed. His leprosy was cleansed. There is a cleansing power in feet washing. There is a cleansing power in feet washing. Leprosy is, is synonymous to any issue of shame and reproach in your life. You have been born again all these years. You have vowed, oh God, I don't want to drink. I don't want to smoke. Each time you make a resolution, but you go back to it. You don't like it, but that deadly habit, that habit... You know, that, that habit is, has just plagued your life. That issue that is bringing shame to you is a leprosy. That issue that you are struggling with, that demonic habit you are struggling with, as your feet are washed tonight, you are receiving instant cleansing. I say you are receiving instant cleansing. In the name of Jesus. Number two. Feet washing carries empowerment for supernatural victory. Supernatural victory. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Luke 10 and verse 19. For behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpions. And over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy 
you have been fighting different kind of battles battles in your family battles in your business the moment you are trying to finish one another one opens up battles from everywhere you are becoming tired oh god how long will this battle last oh god how long how long battles concerning your health satanic arrows just been thrown you go to hospital they cannot even tell you what is happening they tell you it's okay by every kind of investigation everything looks okay but you are not okay battles satanic battles as a result of manipulation of the hand of the devil listen to me beloved as your feet are washed tonight victory is declared for you in the name of Jesus all the scorpions satanic scorpions that have been pursuing your destiny as your feet are washed they are dead tonight in the name of Jesus Battles concerning your fruitfulness. Battle concerning your marital life. Manipulating your marital life. As your feet are washed tonight, the snare of the enemy shall be broken in your life. Supernatural victory. Number three, blessedness of feet washing. Empowerment into realms of exploits. Empowerment into realms of exploits. Get set. Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. Things may not be working for you before now. But thank God you came to this feet washing tonight. Things may not have been working. He says when I rejoice, he will make my feet like the hinds feet. He will take me to the high places. For every stagnation you have suffered before, God is turning it to testimony for you. God is opening you up to fresh exploit in the name of Jesus. Number four, empowerment into realms of fortune. Empowerment into realms of fortune. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 24. By this feet washing, God is empowering you to enter into a realm of fortunes. Fortunes. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. Let him dip his foot in oil. Oil means fortune. Let him dip his foot in oil. Let him dip his foot in oil. As your feet are washed tonight, you are entering into a financial season that you have never seen in your life in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you have been borrowing from before, they are the ones coming to borrow from you from now. In the name of Jesus. Financial fortune. Number five, empowerment into the realm of health, vitality, and longevity. As your feet are washed, you are empowered into the realm of health, vitality, and longevity. After this feet washing, you will be living like stone. Sickness will be far from you. Every day you will be getting stronger. They won't bury you this year. They won't bury you next year. In the name of Jesus. Whatever organ in your body that doctor say is dying. As you dip your feet into water tonight. Life is surging out in the name of Jesus. That defected kidney is receiving life. That lung that has problem is receiving life. Every internal organ that has one problem or the other. I speak life tonight in the name of Jesus. And number six. Access to all our redemptive package in Christ. Access to all our redemptive package. Whatever Jesus has paid the price for. The realm of all things you are taking it. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things. If he couldn't withhold Jesus, what is it that you need that is not available for you tonight? What is it? 
if he could not withhold Jesus, if he gave Jesus, what can he not give us freely? So tonight, whatever you desire, come with expectation. When you want to wash your feet, when it is time to wash your feet, let your faith be expectant. Lord, as my feet are washed tonight, I take this favor. I take this blessing. My destiny is opening up. All things. All things. Feet washing gives us access to all our redemptive package in Christ. And number seven, confirmment of dominion after the order of Christ. Dominion. Dominion. Can I hear you say dominion? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 3. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 3. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Every place they are trying to contest your land that you authentically purchase. And they are trying to use power and connection just to rob you. After your feet are washed, when I go to that place and step into it, in the name of Jesus, I destroy every kind of manipulation. I take over this land. You are looking for a job somewhere? You have been waiting and waiting. Go to that place and walk around that place. I resume in this office in the name of Jesus. You are looking for admission. Go to that school and put your feet on that place in the name of Jesus. I now become a student of engineering, school of engineering. I receive my admission in the name of Jesus. Wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread, you shall possess. Hallelujah. Dominion. Dominion. Feet washing confess dominion. How do we take the delivery of this blessing, therefore, as a roundup? How do we take delivery of the blessing of feet washing? Number one, belief in the mystery of feet washing. Believe. Whatever you don't believe, you can't take. Believe. Luke 1 45. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which we are told her from the law. Believe. Believe in this mystery. Don't look at it there and be watching. What are they doing? Watching, watching. I know you have read plenty book in school. Believe this one. These are spiritual things. You can't explain it with your natural sense. Believe. 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 You may not know how it will come. Believe. You may not know how that door will open. Believe. You may not know how you will carry that child in your womb. Believe. You may not know how your husband will come. Believe. You may not know how that job will come. Believe. You may not know how that property will be your own. Believe. Believe. In the mystery of feet washing. Number two, believe in the finished work of Christ. Believe in the finished work of Christ that enables us access to all that Christ obtained for us. Believe in the finished work. Believe that Jesus has finished it and I'm just there to take it. In John chapter 19 and verse 30. John chapter 19 and verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. Which means your sickness is finished. Your barrenness is finished. That disappointment is finished. That generational cause is finished. That poverty is finished. That pain in your body is finished. It is finished. Say to yourself, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Come on, let the devil hear you loud. It is finished. It is finished. Say it as if you are the only one here tonight. Say it the loudest you can. Number three, believe God for the confirmation of his word. Believe God for the confirmation of his word. Believe God for the confirmation of his word. That as you stretch out your faith, God will confirm his word. Do you know there will be instant healing tonight? Instant deliverances. Instant. Some things will be dropping from your body tonight. Tonight, as your feet, as you are washing your feet, something will happen inside of you. As you wash your feet, 
as you are living and going home, you will receive miracle alert. Before you sleep tonight, you will receive miracle telephone call. And lastly, number four, expect all the missing part of your inheritance in Christ to be delivered to you tonight. Expect whatever is missing that Christ has purchased for you. Your own may be strength. Your own may be wisdom you need. Your own may be blessing. Whatever is missing in your life, expect it, expect it to be delivered unto you. Why? Because surely there is an end. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Whatever you expect is what God will effect. Carry an expectation tonight. Don't just walk to go and wash your feet carelessly. No! As you are on the line, you are speaking forth. Kushikata, odupikaton, protusi, protupekata, rupa, yikata. Lord, tonight I must take my miracle. I'm not going. Tishopa, shapu, to sikata. I receive it. Expect your miracle tonight. Expect your miracle tonight. Expect the delivery of whatever is missing in your life that is in Christ to be delivered unto you. If you believe something will be delivered unto you, shout, I receive it tonight. Jesus guarded himself and he began to wash the feet of the disciples. Not everyone. He began to wash the feet of the disciples. He began to wash the feet of the disciples. The big question is this. Are you one of his disciples? Are you born again? Have you received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? These are spiritual things. If you are not born again tonight, you are missing out. If you are not born again tonight, you wash your feet. All that you have succeeded in doing, you have entered the water as a dry sinner and come out as a wet sinner. Until you are born again, you don't have access to this blessing. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus before, but you were still dead. Please give me this opportunity. Don't allow this encounter to miss you tonight. Don't allow this miracle to elude you tonight. I know somebody is there. You are not born again. God brought you today so that your destiny can be changed for good. I know somebody is here tonight. You gave your life to Jesus before, but you were slid dead. But today, your heart is panting. I need to return back. Give me this opportunity. I don't want you to miss this miracle. This may be the one step that you need to take for a U-turn in your entire destiny. Why will you allow that opportunity to slip you? Everybody is born again except you. But you can return to Jesus tonight and he will grant you salvation of your soul. Hallelujah. Everyone who wants to give his life to Jesus, that person that is saying, I want to return to Jesus tonight, I'd like you to rise up on your feet wherever you are. Rise up on your feet quickly, quickly. God is already anxious, waiting to bless us tonight. You know you are not born again. As I'm speaking now, something is telling you, I need Jesus. Rise up on your feet quickly, 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 wherever you are. Thank you. Take your Bible, begin to come to where I am now. I want to pray for you. God bless you. You know, you are not born again. I beg you, don't miss this encounter tonight. Don't miss this encounter tonight. Forget about who is looking at you, who is not looking at you. Take a step, take a step. Take your Bible and begin to come. Somebody is rededicating his life to Jesus tonight. Take your Bible and begin to come. Church, keep clapping for them. They are coming. 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 Don't waste this opportunity tonight. Don't waste this opportunity tonight. God brought you for your miracle. Come quickly, come quickly. God bless you, come quickly. Church, keep clapping for them. Come quickly, come quickly. God bless you, come quickly. Come quickly. If I were you, I would start running from where I am. Come quickly, come quickly. Somebody is still sitting there. You are still asking, should I go? Should I not go? Take a step now. Take a step. This step is crucial. Church, keep clapping for them. They are coming. I'm waiting for you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. I'm waiting for you. God bless you. Make sure you are not the last person. Wherever you are, come quickly. Come quickly. I see somebody running from the back there. Come quickly. 
Come quickly. Jesus is waiting for you. God bless you. Somebody is still coming. Somebody is still coming. Come quickly. Today is the day of salvation for you. God bless you. We are waiting for you. All those in front, congratulations. I thank God for this step you have taken. You are going to share the testimony there. Bow your head. Bow your head. Please say these words after me. Bow your head. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I recognize I'm a sinner, but you died for me. You saved me from my sins. Jesus, my heart is open tonight. I believe you in my heart, and I confess you with my mouth. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for receiving me. Now I know I am born again. Amen. Put your right hand on your chest as I pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this precious soul that you have saved tonight. No one can come except you draw them. You have drawn this one. Establish them. Let none of them turn back. In the name of Jesus, I put a seal of God over you. You will serve the living God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please open your eyes. God bless you.